everyone, this is Louis Gamino with Enviroscape LA. We're here at another project of ours in Southern California. And the clients here, they really wanted to go sustainable. They wanted to grow what they would eat. So they chose to go ahead and install fruit trees. Now, it's very important with fruit trees to install the right species of fruit trees. Some that will thrive in a smaller area as we are here in this location in Southern California. So in this backyard, we have over 10, possibly a dozen, different fruiting trees or vines and vines combined uh, what was here before was a water loving bamboo and it was the wrong kind of bamboo it was a running bamboo really didn't provide much as far as uh, as far as enjoyment for the homeowners so what they decided to do they contacted Enviroscape and hooked up with our designer and we came up with a game plan to install the right tree in the right spot meaning smaller footprint trees in the smaller locations that we have here well, let's do a quick little uh, tour of the yard in the corner, we have a vine there. That's a Passiflora. It's a passion fruit vine. And if you notice, it's planted in that back corner up against that block wall. Now that is the perfect spot for it because in about a year, between that vine there and the other one planted on the opposite side of the yard, it is going to completely cover that black block wall rather with the Passiflora vine, which produces a passion fruit. Great taste on it, um, but it's known for its phenomenal taste and high in antioxidants. If we keep uh, continuing along the yard here, we have a lamb hoss avocado. Now this is the, the version of avocado that does not get too big, doesn't get a very big footprint, and it reaches about 12, 15 feet. It'll spread out to the size about three or four feet. Of course, if you allow it to, it will grow much bigger than that, but it's uh, genetically composed to go ahead and fit inside those parameters. You could prune it, it takes a pruning uh, very well. If you notice, it is full of flowers here. We are in, uh, what are we in, springtime, almost April. We're in uh, late March. So this particular avocado was the right choice for the spot simply because we don't need an avocado that's going to develop a 30-foot diameter canopy spread. So perfect for this location. As we continue on our walk here, we notice the pomegranate. Now, this guy, he'll branch out. He can be maintained for a trunk uh, total canopy diameter of about, you know, 8 feet. And you could get phenomenal pomegranates off of it as well. You can keep the height down to about 9, 10 feet as well. So we're going to have a complete wall full of fruit trees here. In the corner, we have a persimmon tree. This homeowner, they love a persimmon. the persimmons. They actually have an older persimmon tree over here that is very mature, located on the property. And that guy is reaching the end of its lifespan. So they wanted to go ahead and plant uh, one to think of the future. And you can see it's just now starting to sprout out going into springtime here. Another lamb hoss avocado. Now these do come grafted up from the nursery, so they're already ready to bear fruit. However, they will do well if there is another one uh, close by to help out with that pollination process. It'll just give you a stronger, uh, more flavorful, bigger fruit on it. As we continue along here, this is an apple tree. This apple tree was existing. Uh, they do get pretty good apples off of it. Nice size as well. It's about seven feet tall now at this point. So that is the seventh fruit-bearing variety and it keeps getting better we have a chitimoya now these guys they are have a small little section at the grocery store the chitimoyas phenomenal taste on it I would kind of liken it to kind of like a coconut mango kind of infused together uh, pretty pricey at the grocery store too so uh, the homeowner here they elected to go ahead and grow their own above me we have that older persimmon tree that we had talked about that's on the property it's still producing fruit however it is in decline there is decay on it uh, it's about 40 50 years old this fruit tree so it's towards the end of its lifespan if you notice the boys they're installing the drip irrigation throughout the planter here <coughs> keep in mind when you're doing drip irrigation you want to keep the drip tubing which is responsible for irrigating the soil and keeping that soil nice and wet away from the trunk so if you notice on this avocado tree here it's about a foot away from the trunk of the tree and as time goes by, as the future holds out, we're going to go ahead and move it even farther away. The tree's roots are going to go farther out. It won't need, be needing the water immediately up against the trunk like it does now. It came in a 24-inch box, so its roots right now, they're in a two-by-two two shell. So we need to keep irrigating not only in that shell, but away and outside of it so that the roots can get out there and extend in different areas of the yard. There's a lot of California-friendly uh, plants here. If you notice the ceanothus, the geranium, um, they really don't need any water. And of course, we know that with species like the pomegranate, who are from the Mediterranean area, they need very, very little water. So all these plants, once they're established, will need a minimum amount of water. 
We also have uh, three different citrus going in pots. They're uh, a lime, an orange, a satsuma, which is tangerine, and a lemon. So there is a bountiful amount of fruit coming in this area. Uh, additionally, to cover up all this tubing, we're gonna do some of the Garden Max product made by Green As It Gets. This product here contains 20 different mycorrhizae as well as 20 different beneficial bacteria. We found that it really helps out, get everything a good start and get the, those good fungi growing throughout the soil profile. And to complement that, we're gonna apply the mini bark, which is a mulch on top of the soil, which is always organically gonna be breaking down and feeding the soil as time goes by. And that'll get replenished about every six months or so. So this is just another project from Viruscape LA, planting a lot of fruit trees, making the uh, garden come alive here in Southern California. So when you think sustainability, think Enviroscape LA.